Hi, everyone. Welcome to Read to Me, Miss Tracy. Story time on a Sunday. So I'm dual broadcasting um, from, from my home studio. And I'm getting logged in with um, the I See Me bookstore. Yep, 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 yep. So I'm getting logged in with them now. So give me a moment to get on over there to them. Uh-oh. This is telling me I'm not logged in. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, I think we're, I think we're going now. Okay, now we want I see me. We're gonna go live with them in just a moment. Do 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 all right, let's go. Come on, let's go, because we got folks waiting. They want to do story time. I'm ready to do story time. Oh, let's get some music on. I know how this looks. But this topic Hi everybody! Welcome to Sunday Story Time with Miss Tracy and I see me bookstore. Do 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 back in the studio today because you know I was at the Victory Garden last week, which was really nice. It was cute, and thank goodness was bug free. Had some technical difficulties at the end of the video, so I'm glad to be back on to the Facebook page. So um, I am going to input my YouTube channel, Read to Me Miss Tracy, because I had an event and I took my little read to me Miss Tracy sign with me and I don't know what I did with it. So, you know, probably some paparazzi wanted it for a collector's item or something. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> um, I am going to post where you guys who have not already, um, for everyone who has not subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then you can certainly uh, do so by going here. Crazy. And if you're out there already logged in, let me know who's watching. I like to, you know, put it in the comment section. If you got little people in the living room with you or wherever you're in your computer room, wherever you are cuddled up in the bed. I don't know. It's a sunny afternoon. You could be out on the porch or in the backyard in a, in a tent. You could be on a boat, on a float. You could be swimming in a moat. Hopefully you're not wearing a coat unless you live in Alaska. I'm thinking even Alaska is pretty warm right now. I went. It's delicious. And I'm a little sleepy <laughs> as a result of it. Mm hmm. Share and certainly subscribe. Thank you very much. 
All right, here we go. Well, nobody's checked in yet. I don't know who's out there. <laughs> Let me know who's a watching. I see there's eight eyeballs. It tells me right there there's eight eyeballs that's watching. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, let me move this table a little bit, squeezing my knees. Okay, well, we've got um, some really good books here that we're going to read. I got these books from the St. Louis County Library. And what I think is pretty cool about these books is it's kind of like a theme. I do have one or two books that... I did not get a chance to read last week, so I'm going to read those first. And I think um, because I, I kind of think like it's summer books and, you know, you can explore. Oh, you know what? Actually, I did. I read this one. Everywhere Wonder. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read that one. Or maybe I meant to read it. No. Nope. I didn't read this one. I meant to read it, but I didn't read it. And On the Town, Judith by Judith Casey, Casely. Yeah. Why is there a commercial already? Can I get a break here? Commercial, commercial, commercial. So yeah, I'm gonna read those two first, but the rest of the books I'm going to read all have to do with like music things, right? So I'm pretty excited about that because Miss Tracy loves to dance. Oh my gosh. Dancing is like a spiritual release for me. And while you guys are still checking in, I'm gonna pull this shade down because I don't like the glare on my glasses. How's that? Yes. Now, that's better. No glasses glare. Okay. Well, it's nine, ten after. Anybody who's coming in a little late, that's fine. We just love that you're coming in and joining us and reading stories with us, okay? So, um, like I said, the very first one that we're going to read are, like, exploratory books, you know, so things that you do when you're, you're out – you know, hanging out, maybe going to a new city, you're taking a road trip to a new place, something, someplace outdoors that's safe, and you're wearing your masks. Yes, yes, yes. So let's welcome our, let's do our welcome song, shall we? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Let's do it one more time. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Okay. So, like I said, I've got two books that I wanted to read that I didn't get a chance to read last week. So I'm going to start out with Judy Casely, On the Town. And this book is about, and I hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. This book is about... The places that you go in your town and other towns and just different things that's different about all the different places you go. Yeah, like some places have big, tall buildings and a lot of them all jam-packed. Some places have barns and cows and chickens and things running around. Houston is one of those cities that has a little bit of both combined. You might have like a farmhouse right next door to a high city scraper. Very peculiar, that city. But I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. I like Texas. Texas is a really cool spot. Okay. A community adventure. You ready? Ready! Okay. Here we go. Judith Casely on the town. Charlie's class was studying community. A community, said the teacher, is a group of people who live or work on this, in the same area or who have the same thing and something in common with each other. She gave each of the children a black speckled notebook. Visit the people and places in your community. 
take your notebooks and explore. <laughs> Homework, asked Mama when school was over. Yes, said Charlie. What is my community? Let's take a walk and find out, said Mama. Charlie's teacher left the building and waved goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> teacher, said Charlie. Should I write her name down? Absolutely, said Mama. Your teacher is a big part of your community. Charlie wrote teacher. Then he wrote school and drew pictures of some of the other teachers. Let's see what, what Charlie drew. Can you see? He's not a bad artist. Good job, Charlie. There's his teacher, Miss Leslie. And there's the other teachers at his school. <laughs> okay. Mama and Charlie walked through the park. The garbage collectors were emptying trash cans. A sign on one trash can said, keep your park clean. Charlie picked up a soda bottle and threw it in the trash can. Threw it in the trash can that said, recycle. Then he wrote the word garbage and mama spelled collector, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-O-R for him. And Charlie copied the word recycle. On the way into town, Charlie tripped over something. It was someone's lost wallet. Oh, <gasps> and Charlie showed it to mama. Maybe we should take it to the police station, he said, she said. Good idea, Charlie. I bet when I when I lost my purse or, or when my friend has lost his wallet, oh boy. Good idea, Mama told him. And they walked to the police station where they met Joe, the police officer, and gave the wallet to him. You're a good part of my community, said Charlie. So are you, said Joe. Charlie wrote the police station, and then he wrote Joe and drew a star next to his name. Oh, that was fair. Nice, Charlie. There's Joe, and there's the inside of the police station. You need a haircut, Mama told Charlie as they left the police station. Barber shop, said Charlie. So smart, said Mama. Charlie wrote barbershop, and then George cut his hair, and Charlie wrote George and drew a pair of scissors. Very handsome, said Mama. Now I need to buy stamps. Oh, and there's, there's Charlie's draw, drawing of George and the barbershop and a little bit of hair. Probably is his hair. Could be. Post office, cried Charlie. My genius, said Mama. Charlie wrote post office while a lady behind the counter whose name was Evelyn sold Mama a kind of stamps that didn't need licking. Charlie wrote Evelyn and drew his own special stamp. Look at that. Charlie's becoming an illustrator and an author. Look, there we go. See it? Right there. Did you ever think, did you ever thank grandma for the toy she sent you? Mama asked. We'll buy a car for grandma at the pharmacy, said Charlie, writing pharmacy. But he spelled it a little not, he didn't spell it all the way right, but he spelled it out. See, he spelled it F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. The right way to spell it is P-H. P-H-A-R-M-A-C-Y. Mm-hmm. It's not a farm, said Mom. Changing the F to P-H, then they picked out a thank you card, and Charlie waved to the man who was behind the pharmacy counter. Charlie wrote his name and spelled pharmacy correctly. I'm running out of mom money, said Mama. Mama to Charlie. Bank, said Charlie. Bingo, said Mama. Charlie read the badge on the bank teller's blouse. Her name was Miss Chung. And she gave Mama money while Charlie wrote her name with a long line of dollar signs. I know that's right, Charlie. 
There you go. See, there's the bank, and there's Miss Chung with a lot of dollars. That just might be my favorite ones yet. <laughs> All this hard work is making me hungry, said Charlie. Really? said Mama. And where shall we go? To Henry's Luncheonette, Charlie told her. Write it down, said Mama. Then Charlie had a chocolate milk and Mama had coffee. And Charlie drew a picture of Juanita, the waitress. <gasps> Juanita was my grandmother's name. Mama pulled a book out of her pocketbook. Have you finished reading this? She asked Charlie. Yes, library, Charlie shouted. You're a whiz, said Mama. And there's lunch net. And there's Miss Juanita. That doesn't look like my grandmother, but, you know, hey, she's not the only Juanita in the world. They walked down the street to pass the fire station. Uncle Carrie was polishing the fire engine. Charlie wrote fire station. He drew a fire and a hose and wrote Uncle Carrie with five hearts. Uncle Carrie put, out a, put a fire hat on Charlie's head and carried him around on his shoulders. How cool is that? And there's Charlie's picture of Uncle Carrie and all of the little thingies at the fire station. Uncle Carrie. I think he likes Uncle Carrie, don't you? Yeah, I think so. They left the firehouse and went to the library where they checked out some books. Charlie wrote the librarian's name and drew a picture of her. It's time to meet Papa at the train, said Mama. Train station! Woo, woo. Have you ever ridden on a train? I have. It's really a lot of fun. I love it. But if you've been on for a long time, sometimes after you've ridden on a train, when you get off, you can still feel the train rocket even though you're not on the train anymore. <laughs> train station, said Charlie. What a brain, said Mama. Papa stepped off the train and waved goodbye to the conductor. Charlie hugged Papa. Mama kissed Papa. <laughs> Charlie showed Papa his community book. Then he wrote train station and train conductor and they headed down Main Street. There it is. Some flowers would be nice, said Mama sweetly. Flower shop, said Charlie. Isn't he smart, said Mama. Papa agreed. And Charlie drew a picture in his notebook of the florist holding a bouquet of flowers in her hands. Papa bought Mama a bunch of red tulips and said, is anyone hungry? Oh man, they have had a busy day, Mama and Charlie. They just had lunch and now they're already ready for supper. <laughs> Pizza parlor, said Charlie. Sounds good, said Papa. Write it down while we order, Mama told him. Lewis, Lewis bought them a pizza, half pepperoni and half mushroom, and they ate it all. Charlie wrote Lewis, Lewis next to the pizza parlor, and they headed off for home. Mmm, pizza. I would like pepperoni and mushrooms on my pizza. Mmm-hmm. Light cheese, lots of tomato sauce, and crispy crust. Thank you very much. Charlie played trucks with Papa. He read books with Mama. Then it was time for bed. Mama, Papa, Charlie called from his room. What, said Mama. Said Mama. Yes, what, said Papa. I forgot, said Charlie. You forgot what, said Papa. Community, said Charlie. It's all down in your notebook, Mama told him. Not the very best part, the best part of all. Well, tell us, Mama, said Mama. We're listening, said Papa. Do you know what he's going to say? I think I do. Home, mm -hmm, 
said Charlie. I forgot about home. Write it down in the morning, Mama whispered to Charlie. Now go to sleep. Sleep tight, said Papa. Kiss, kiss, said Mama. Good night, said Charlie. <laughs> Good deal. There you go. In the morning, Charlie ate breakfast. He took out his notebook and he sat on the porch. The mailman walked by carrying a package. The plumber pulled up across the street. The gardener began mowing the neighbor's lawn and Charlie drew a picture and he wrote the word home. Then he wrote my community across the front of the book. His day had begun. That book is called On the Town by Judith Casely. I thought I wanted to read that last week too, but I ran out of time and there were some technical difficulties. So who else out there, you guys? Let me know. Do, 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 do. Who's out there? Give me something. Check in with me. I want to say hello to anybody's out there. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Got something common or maybe you did a book like that at your school. You had some homework that you did something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Let me know if you're out there. I want to say hello to you. Okay. So we have another book kind of in the same, same story, story theme, I guess you will, about exploration and learning about your neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This one is called Everywhere Wonder, and it's written by Matthew Swanson and illustrated by Robbie Bear. I almost felt like I read this last week, but I guess I did it. Because when I flipped through it, it didn't seem like I read it. But sometimes when I review the books before I read them, and then I go to read them, it feels like I've read them before. So I get confused sometimes. I wanted to come up with a system to fix that. I have a story to share. It's a little gift from me to you. You might not know it, but you have a story too. You'll find it in the things you stop to notice. I did read this because I remember the little boy going through the window. I read this last week. You guys. Okay, we're not going to read this again. We've got, enough, we've got plenty of other books to read. When I, saw, when I saw him go through that window, I knew I had read this book. It's okay. But if you want to read it yourself, because I really enjoyed it, Everywhere Wonder. It just felt like I'd reviewed it or something before. Okay. We read this one already. And I remember grabbing it for another event that I did, which is the same one when I can't find my sign now. Anywho, so we're going to go with B-Boy Buzz by Bell Hooks. Now, I know I haven't read this one to you guys. And I got this one from the St. Louis Public Library. But I know they do have it at the ICME bookstore. I, I'm, I'm almost positive that they do. Because that's what I do a lot of times. I go to the library, library, not library. I go to the library and I will check out a book. And if I really, really like it, then I head on over to ICME and I get it so I can have it at home with me forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I be boy. All bliss boy. All fine beat. All bow boy. <laughs> be beautiful. Do we have any boys watching? Let me know in the comments. All bad boy beast. All boy. I be boy running. I be boy jumping. Whoops. Boy sitting down. I be boy laughing. 
Telling my story. Talking way too loud. Then sitting all quiet and still. All boy. Hug me close. Don't let me down. Oh, I'll take a hug. And you know what Miss Tracy likes to tell you to do. Yeah, you got to hug yourself sometimes, you know? Sometimes there's nobody around or they've got stuff in their hands and you need a hug right that net, right there. Man, look, better wrap those arms around yourself and squeeze. Give yourself a hug. Yeah. Oh, boy. Big open heart. Sweet mind. All think and dream time. Alone with myself. All ready for the world to see and play. All B boy buzz in love with being a boy. Mm -hmm. B boy buzz by Bell Hooks. Got that at the St. Louis Public Library. And so I've got another one. This one's about more about a little boy and yeah i don't see any comments nobody's out there watching nobody's out there that wants me to say hello to their little people huh? okay no problem yesterday i had the blues by jerron ashford frame and the pictures are drawn by R. Gregory Christie. Yesterday, I had the blues. Not the rain on the sidewalk blues, or the broken skateboard blues, or the I grew my favorite football jersey blues. Mm -mm. Not those. Not even the morning, Monday morning, cold cereal instead of pancakes blues. Uh-uh. <laughs> I had those deep down in my shoes blues. Bum, 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 bum. The go away, Mr. Sun, quit smiling at me blues. Do, do, do. Do -do -do -do. The hold up pillow, wish it was tomorrow blues. Do -do -do -do. The kind of blues make you want to just turn down the volume. Hmm, man, he has really got the blues. But today, I got the greens. The run in my hand along the hedge is greens. The down to the drugstore and beyond. Dirt in my socks, greens. The kind of greens make you want to be somebody. Be somebody. Be somebody to love. Uh, got to be somebody to love. Uh. Daddy says he's got the grace. The straight shoelaces, coffee in the car grays. The lines between his eyes looking at his watch grays. But don't ask for a new skateboard till tomorrow grays. Oh, 
Poor daddy. Hmm. Oh, look. Daddy got a parking ticket. Yeah. That's enough to give you the base, I'll tell you. And it said $50. Mm, mm, mm. You know how many books I could get from the ICME bookstore for 50 bucks? Wow. Sasha says she's got the pinks. The shiny tights, ballet after school, glitter on her cheeks, pinks. The where's my butterfly hair clip pinks. The kind of pinks that make me want to catch the next bus. <laughs> He's like, yeah, get that out of here. <laughs> we'll see how long he keeps that up. Mm -hmm. Talia says she's got the indigos. I said, Indigo's the same as blue. Talia says, uh-huh. She's got the saxophone in the subway. Indigo's. <laughs> the hair hanging loose. Write a poem that don't rhyme indigos. The kind of indigos make her act like the drapes. <laughs> Graham's got the yellows, I can tell. The humming. <laughs> the humming that parade song, the flower house slipper yellows. The mix up some oatmeal raisin cookies yellows. I hope. <laughs> I love oatmeal raisin cookies. I think besides snickerdoodles, oatmeal raisin is my second favorite. Love snickerdoodles. I like to say snickerdoodles as much as I like to eat snickerdoodle cookies. Mm, it's my favorite. What's your favorite cookie? Mama says she's got the reds. Look out! Ooh, mama does not look happy. Oh, you know why? They're jumping up and down in the bed. Hey! It is fun to do that, though. Gives me an idea. I think I'm going to go and jump up and down in my bed. That'll make me feel a lot better. <laughs> Yay! Yesterday, I had the blues. Today, I got the greens. Tomorrow, maybe it'll be the silvers. The rocket-powered skateboard silvers. Zoom. And around here, that's okay. Because to together, we got something that'll never change. We got a family. The kind of family makes you feel like it's all golden. Living my life like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. Golden. Living my life like it's golden. <laughs> there you go. Yesterday, I had the blues. There you go. I can see about the glare. And that is written by Jaron Ashford Frame. And illustrations by Gregory R. Gregory Christie. Yep. Got it at the library. Okay. Now. Where are the other ones? Oh, they're under the computer. There we go. Doop, 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 doop. Okay, I really love this book. It was a hit when I was working at the St. Louis Public Library and we were celebrating Black Music Month, which is in June. Yeah, and it's written by Wynton Marcellus. Very smart very classy guy and very, very talented. His whole family comes from a family of musicians. And I had a pleasure of meeting him and his brother Branford. So we all had a great time. It was a really good time. And not all at the same time, but still, good time. Branford, when he came here to St. Louis and went in several times, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, 
Uh, this book is by Wynton Marsalis and illustrated by Paul Rogers. Squeak, rumble, 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 womp, womp, womp. I'm already excited about reading this book because I love to make loud noises. Squeak, burp, rumble, 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 womp, womp, womp. Wow, look at all the instruments. I love, have you ever gone to hear live music? I especially enjoy reggae and they have different instruments. I enjoy um, classical and going to the, you know, the symphony and seeing all of those instruments and they're just beautiful. Like, and then they make noises that just makes beautiful sounds. Oh, I love, 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 love it. Squeak. <laughs> a Sonic Adventure by Wynton Marsalis. Oh, this is going to be an adventure. <laughs> Our back door opens. Our back door squeaks. And if you notice, the houses look like the houses in New Orleans. Squeak. A nosy mouse. It's also how my sister's saxophone sometimes speaks. <laughs> She's got to do a little more practicing. <laughs> Big trucks on the highway. <laughs> Hunger makes my Tommy. <laughs> Is that what your stomach sounds like when it when you're hungry? The Fairview Baptist Church Band. Let's see. It says, didn't he ramble, ramble, rambled all around, in and out of town. The big bass drum goes boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Our faucet needs a fix. My alarm clock ticks. Pizzicato violinist, click, pluck, flicks. Cycle speeds away. The trombone slides down to play. I love the wind whistling across my face. Whoosh, whooshing my couch kite into outer space. Womp, 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 The tubas fill up the place. What are you doing, Tinkerbell? What are you doing over there? Shh, shh. Buttering my toast. Quick, 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 where it itches the most. Hear that washboard boast. Flop, flap, flap, flap. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Flop, fa, 
wallop. Flap, flip, flap, clap, clap, clap. Uh oh. Looks like the baby has escaped the bathtub. Silly baby. <laughs> what babies always like to run away from the bathtub naked? Ting, tinky, ting, tap. Bling, 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 plop. Doom, 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 Flies, buzz, 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 all around my food. Hey, get out of here. The barber's clippers. And I'm a cool dude. I huzz, 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 a kazoo when I get the mood. The big train rolls down the track. Woo! 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 My family's loud. Rah! 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 <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but I lay back. Mm -hmm. He's laid back, all right. My trumpet. Blah, 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 with a big old attack. Squeak, squeak, eek, eek, eek. Rumble, 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 rum. Tick, clock, woo, woo. Brum, brum, brum. Womp, womp, shuck, whoop, whoop. Clack, clack, clack. Doom, ba doom, ba doom, boom, boom. Zoom, whap, bap, whap, ba da, bap, bap. <laughs> the end. <laughs> cool beans, y'all. That was Squeak, Rumble, Womp, Womp, Womp by Wynton Marsalis, and the pictures were drawn by Paul Rogers. <laughs> cool beans. Like that one a lot. That one was fun. And you know, I'll tell you. I got that, and it also comes with Miss Ellis Playhouse, and I'm sorry, I said St. Louis Public, didn't I? It's actually St. Louis County. These are book bags that you can get, and they usually have a series of them. This one is called We've Got Rhythm, and they have a series of books in there, and they also have some musical instruments that you can play, right? While you're having story time, maybe about story time about music, which is kind of what we're doing today. Pretty cool. And the books come in there. You don't have to pick them out. You can just grab the books, and they're all in there and ready to go. Yep. So here's another one out of that book box. And, you know, I see me, um, I see a bookstore also has, like, books, book, um, book bundles that you can get, and you can get them all together in a series, too. So this is called This Jazz Man by Karen Earhart and pictures by R.G. Roth. Yes, we'll have time. Okay, cool. Do, do, do. Oh, look. This book belongs to This Jazz Man name. Oh, and if you want... You can autograph, well, this is the library's book, but if you bought this book at the ICM bookstore, you can put like a ticket here. It's like a ticket and it's like your, you know, autograph copy. This jazz man, he plays one. He plays rhythm with his thumb, with a snap, snap, snazzy snap. Give the man a hand. This jam man scats with the band. Scat that, la la ki da ti, ba ba pi la bu ba bu, da la ti la ti. This jazz man, he plays too. He makes music with his shoe, with a tap, tap, shuffle, slap. Give the man a hand. This jam man, <clears throat> jazz man, stomps with the band. Boom, ba dum ba dum boom, ba dum 
A shuffle step and a shim sham hop. Step slide. Mambo at the Club Havana. Tick a 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 tick This jazz man, he plays three. He plays Congo between his knees with the bippity bop, boppity bop. You're the man of hand. This jazz man pounds with the band. Tinkerbell, she's. Oh, man. Bring it on home. Now you're cooking. This jazz man, he plays four. He conducts some with through the score with a one and a two and a one. <laughs> and give a man a hand. This jazz man, he leads the band. This jazz man, he plays five. He plays bebop. He plays jive with a beetle bop. Bop, bop, be the <laughs> Give the man a hand. This jazz man blows with the band. This jazz man, he plays six. He plays solo with his sticks. With a bop, 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 bop. Give the man a hand. This jazz man plays beats with the band. <clears throat> This jazz man, he plays seven. He plays notes that rise to heaven with a toot, toot, doo doo. Give the man a hand. This jazz man wails with the band. Cute story so far, huh? This jazz man, he plays eight. He plays keys all 88 with a ting, clink, 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 clink. Give the man a hand. This jazz man swings with the band. Thump, 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 thump. This jazz man, he plays nine. He plucks strings that sound divine. With a thump, 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 a dump. Give the man a hand. This jazz man jams with the band. These jazz men, they play ten. We beg, beg them to play again with an encore, encore. We want more. Give, <laughs> give them all a hand. <laughs> These jazz men make one great band. Jazz hands. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> I love it. Oh, and look, each jazz man in here has a story about it. Jazz man number one, playing number one from New Orleans, was Louis Armstrong. They used to call him Satchmo. Yeah, and then the jazz man number two, playing number two from Br Richmond, Virginia, Bill Bo Jangles Johnson. He was the dancing jazz man. And then Playing number three, all the way from Havana, Cuba. Can't wait to go to Cuba. Luciano Chano, Pozo y Gonzalez. Yes, he was, Pozo was a celebrated conguero or a conga player and composer of carnival songs in Cuba when he moved to New York City. Mm. Playing number four from Washington, D.C. was Edward Kennedy, Duke Ellington. Ah. Ellington was a gifted pianist, yet it was together with his orchestra that he was most dazzling. Oh, wasn't he though? Playing number five from Kansas City, Kansas was Charlie Bird Parker. That's who was playing the saxophone. A legendary jazz soloist, Par Charlie Parker played the sac saxophone with an unmatched blend of eloquence, subtlety, and exhilarating speed. Do you out there, do you play any instruments? Playing number six was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Art Boo Blakey. Yep, Blakey was an innovative drummer who pressed 
whose press robes leaning on an elbow on the drum service to change the intonation were imitated by many. Playing number seven was from Cheryl, South Carolina, John Burke's Dizzy Gillespie. If you ever see him play, his cheeks pop out like this big when he's playing. Yeah, when he's playing a trombone or the trumpet. Gillespie was a trumpet player without equal. Finding swing music too predictable, he and his comrade Charlie Parker started a jazz uprising with bebop. Mm -hmm. Playing number eight from Harlem in New York City, Thomas Wright's Fats Waller. Waller was a master of stride piano, which involves the left hand keeping a constant rumbling beat and the right hand playing a light, melt bouncing melody. Number nine was playing from Watts in Los Angeles, Charles Baron Mingus. Yeah, Mingus was a phenomenal bassist, one of the few to reach the ranks of band leader. Raised on gospel music and classically trained, Mingus learned about jazz firsthand from Armstrong, Parker, and Ellington. The end. Wait a minute, I thought we had 10. Nope, we didn't. That's the end though. Pretty cool, huh? Love it, love it, love it, love it. That also came in the book box and that's called This Jazz Man. It's by Karen Earhart. Yeah. Cool beans. Okay. This one is absolutely adorable. It's called I Got the Rhythm. Isn't she a cutie pie? <laughs> Little Afro puffs, I love it. And this one is written by Connie Schofield Morrison, and it's illustrated by Frank Morrison. Aw, look at her in the window. Aw, in her jammies. Onesie pajamas. I love onesies. Oh, I wish they made onesies for summertime, but they don't. They're always in the winter. Anyway. If you guys are still with me in the wintertime, you'll get to see some of them because I'm going to be doing story time in my onesies. Yes, sir, Bob. Sure am. Oh, her mommy is pretty too. Oh, I love the pictures in this book. All right, here we go. I thought of a rhythm in my head. Think, 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 think. I heard the rhythm with my ears. Beep, 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 beep. This man playing the, he's got like buckets and things like that. He reminds me of my friend Osiris that you'll sometimes hear him on the street sometimes at baseball games here in St. Louis or concerts. He's good too. I looked at the rhythm with my eyes. Blink, 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 blink. I smell the rhythm with my nose. Mmm, <sighs> cupcakes. I sang the rhythm with my mouth. Ooh la la la. And look at the boys looking at her like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I caught the rhythm with my hands. Clap, 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 clap. I kept the rhythm with my fingers. Snap, 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 snap. I shook a rhythm with my hips. Come on, shake them with me. I felt the rhythm with my knees. Knock, 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 knock. My knees knock anytime I'm, I'm just walking. I walked the rhythm with my feet. Stomp, 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 stomp,
stomp, stomp, stomp, stomp. I tap the rhythm with my toes. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Boy, she is really on those toes too, isn't she? <laughs> I dance to the rhythm of a drum. Boom, ba, boom, ba, doo, ba, da, boom, boom, ba, ba, doo, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba, doo, da, boom, boom, ba, boom, 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 da, boom, ba, doo, ba, da, boom, boom, da, boom, ba, doo, da. I clapped and snapped. I tipped and tapped. I popped and locked. I hipped and hopped. Beep, bop, bing, bang, boom, boom, beat it, boom, 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 <laughs> Cute book. I love this. Love this. I Got the Rhythm by Connie Schofield Morrison and illustrated by Frank Morrison. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I think we have time for one more story. And this one is called Little Melba and Her Big Trombone. Yeah, look, it's longer than she is. Just this part right here is about the size of her, and let alone this part. And this book is written by Katherine Russell Brown and illustrated by Frank Morrison, the same guy who just drew the pictures on the other book that we have. So I know I'm going to enjoy it. Hmm. Spread the word. Little Melba Dorita Liston was something special. This year, she was born, the year she was born, it's 1926. The place was Kansas City, where you could reach out and feel the music. The avenues were lined with jazz clubs and street bands and folks harmonizing on every corner. All the hot music makers made sure they had a gig in Kansas City. From as far back as her memory would go, Melba loved the sounds of music. Blues and jazz and gospel rhythms danced in her head. The clink of a guitar, the hum of a bass, the thrum thrum of a drum, the ping-pang of a piano, the tremble of a sweet horn. Nobody's out there. Huh. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. All right, well. Okay. Notes stirred and rhythms bubbled all through Melba's home. She couldn't get enough. Music was always in her mind. She daydreamed about beats and lyrics. Music was on Melba's mind at night, too, when she should have been fast asleep. Mm-hmm. You can see the musical notes all dancing in her head. Melba loved to hum along with the radio. Sometimes the music sounded so good she cupped her ear to the majestic and closed her eyes. She especially loved Fats Waller with his growly voice and booming piano. The player, the player piano came alive when Melba's kinfolk stopped by while Melba peddled her auntie's dance around the room. <laughs> Look, there's her auntie's dancing. <laughs> Oh, with all that music flying by, Melba wanted to create her own sounds. When she was seven years old, 
she decided to sign up for music class at school. What instrument could I play? Melba wondered. At the traveling music store, Melba eyed a long, funny looking horn. That one, she cried, it's beautiful. A trombone, Mama Lucille frowned. It's big and you're such a little girl. Please, Melba begged. Mama Lucille brought the shiny trombone on the spot. She couldn't say no to her only child. Melba beamed. Melba beamed from ear to ear and squeezed her new friend. <laughs> Look how big it is. <laughs> That night on the porch, Melba listened to Grandpa John play his guitar. This time, she had her own music maker. Grandpa John showed Melba how to cradle the horn and she tried to push out the slide, but her arm was too short. She had to tilt her head sideways and stretch <laughs> out her right arm. Melba gave the horn a mighty bow. <laughs> it sounded bad, like a howling dog. I know good, Grandpa, Melba said, tearing up. If you can blow, you can play, Grandpa John said. Now stand up straight and blow steady. Melba stayed up real late and practice until she could play a simple tune all by herself. There's Grandpa and there's Melba. Even with her keen ear, teaching herself to play the trombone was no piece of cake, but Melba kept blowing her horn, getting better day by day. The cool brass of the horn felt swell on her fingers. Before long, Melba and her horn were making magic. She was only eight when the local radio station invited her to play a solo. Mama Lucille and Grandpa John were so proud as they watched little Melba play her big, big trombone. Oh, look, there she is in the, in the station. Ha, <laughs> Hard times hit rock bottom in 1937. That's when Mel and her mother moved to Los Angeles. The long train ride took them five states away, west, and worlds away from Kansas City. Melba's new teachers discovered that she was smart as a whip. Her test scores were so high, the principal skipped her up from the sixth grade to eighth grade. Wow. I wonder do they do that anymore? In high school, Melba joined Alma Hightower's famous after-school music club. Melba quickly became the star player in the club's band, the Melodic Dots. <laughs> the other club members struggled to keep up with Melba. Jealous boys called her bad names. She tried not to care, but way down deep, the names hurt. Melba used her horn to turn all those feelings into soul for music. Ooh, see? Sometimes your hater give you inspiration. Don't keep, don't stop doing what you do. You turn that, that bad feeling into something really, really good. Like sometimes with me, if I'm feeling kind of sad, I get, I get to come here and read books with you guys, and I do feel a lot better after I read stories to you. Melba's talent kept growing. She began writing music too. Then in 1943, when she was 17, Melba was invited to tour the country with a new band led by trumpet player Gerald Wilson. Go meet the world, Mama Lucille said, and hugged Melba goodbye. You have my blessing. Melba could feel it in her bones. The jazz scene was calling her name. Wow, 17. <laughs> Traveling with the band was a thrill. Each city from Salt Lake to New York was an eye full of something new. Melba became a master musician. 
She composed and arranged music, spinning rhythms, harmonies, and melodies into gorgeous songs. And when Melba played the trombone, her bold notes and one-of-a-kind sound mesmerized the crowd. They were like, oh, did you hear what she just played? Still, Melba was lonely. She was the only woman in the band. Some of the men were cruel. Others acted as if she wasn't there. Melba let the music in her head keep her company. Rough times came when Melba traveled down south with singer Billie Holiday and her band. Some white folks didn't show good manners toward the folks with brown skin. Hotel rooms were hard to come by and the band members often had to sleep on the bus. Restaurants didn't always want their business and in the clubs, audiences sometimes just sat and stared at the band or didn't show up at all. Discouraged, Melba almost walked away from her trombone for good. Says hotel, the best service for whites only. Mm. But Melba's fans wouldn't let her quit. By the 1950s, all the cool jazz musicians wanted some Melba magic. Dizzy Gillespie, Duke Ellington, Quincy Jones, and more. They wanted to be on the bandstand with Melba and her divine horn. They wanted to play Melba's music. Melba and her music trotted around the globe, dazzling audiences, making headlines in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. All her life, Melba kept composing and arranging music, kept making her trombone sing. Spread the word! Melba Dorita Liston was something special. Wow, and there's a real picture of her right there. Can you see it? There she is with her real trombone. And then here's another picture of Melba and Quincy Jones. Ah, how cool is that, you guys? And look, just in time, because the battery is about to run out of the computer. <laughs> oh, man, that was fun, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I really did too. Yeah. I don't know who's out there, you guys. I didn't see any comments. I didn't see anything where anybody, you know, tell me who they are and everything. So I can't say hi to you personally, but you know what? It's all good. I just hope that you enjoyed the books that we had that we had to read today. Yeah. And if you like those books, you can check them out at your local library. And of course, order them from the ICD bookstore. They would love to have your order. And uh, when you do order them, please be patient. A lot of the bookstores all nationally are all having the same problem. A lot of the publishers are out of a lot of the books that are being ordered. Yeah, which is a good thing. People are reading books. Yes. Okay. So earlier we talked about giving yourself a hug. So let's do it before we get out of here. Let's do it. Give yourself a hug. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Breathe in, goodness, cotton candy, licks and whips from puppy tails. Breathe out the bad stuff. Sadness, coughing, sore throat, toothaches, oh, having to go to bed early. Yeah, getting in trouble, mean people. Breathe in laughter and sunshine and cotton candy. Oh, I feel so good. Yes, you did a great time. You did such a good job. Breathe out the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. When you're feeling good, give yourself a hug. When you're feeling bad, give yourself a hug. It's your daily vitamin. I've been Miss Tracy. Please. Go to my YouTube channel, read the number two, me, Miss Tracy. I have it there in the comment section there. And please subscribe, like, and share, okay? And be sure to give I See Me Bookstore a call. If you'd like any of those books, um, I'm 
I'm simultaneously recording this on YouTube. So if you want to see me reading it again, you can read it there. And if you need the titles to any of the books, I'll also have it in today's uh, YouTube channel. I read to me, Miss Tracy, <laughs> story time chat. Okay. Thank you all very much. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Read to your, your story time companion and your pet. Anyone, even if you can't, you know, if there's nobody in the house to read with you, read yourself. Yeah. Use your imaginary friend. There you go. Okay. Cool beans. Just as long as you're reading. Okay. I'm going to see you later, alligator in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss. Mwah! Jellyfish. See you soon. Big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Thank you all for watching, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.